What's going on YouTube? This is SG1 Sports and in this video I'm going to give you the top 10 players for the Florida Gators for this upcoming 2021 college football season. When we talk about the top 10 players, not necessarily the most talented players, but the 10 players that will have the most impact. 10 players uh, that will make the, the biggest difference for this Florida team in 2021. A lot of turnover obviously in the passing game. Uh, the team, I think, is going to look a little bit different offensively, trying to get better defensively. They've got some players on the defensive side of the ball. Uh, they have, I mean, they've got the talent to have a, I think, one of the, the better, you know, a top half defense in the SEC. It didn't work out that way last year. But sometimes when you're scoring a ton of points, it puts a lot of pressure on the defense, and sometimes those stats get skewed. But it, it, re it wasn't great for them defensively last year. I think we see at least somewhat of a turnaround, and you're going to see some defensive players on this list, starting with number 10, and that is Gervin Dexter on the defensive line. Last year as a true freshman, 20 tackles, two tackles for loss. Also had an interception there on the defensive line. He was a five-star in the 2020 class. Uh, one of the top rated recruits in all of all, in all of the country in that 2022 class in that 2020 class i should say and you look at uh, just as a true freshman he's already been on the field he's already had some playing time we've seen what he can do uh, he is a monster there on the defensive line i'm expecting him to really break out uh, i think he has potential to be an all sec type player this year uh, so watch for gervin dexter i think he is going to be Again, one of their better players on the defensive side of the ball. At number nine, we've got Trey Dean, safety for the Florida Gators. 34 tackles last season, one tackle for loss, had an interception, a fumble recovery as well. Of course, that one interception did not end too well for him, if you remember that. Uh, but this is just a guy that's a leader back there in the secondary. Uh, he's a veteran presence for them, uh, and I expect him to have a pretty good year this year. Didn't have a great season last year, but uh, he's a versatile player, uh, you know, good in the pass game can come up stop the run uh, make tackles a good tackler so i think he's going to be uh, a pretty big impact for them on defense and then, like i said really he's kind of that leader he's that leader that veteran back there in the secondary not their best secondary player which we'll get to another one in just a few minutes but daquan daquan newkirk is at number eight uh, for florida transfer from auburn he had 28 tackles last season three tackles for loss one and a half sacks uh, just a guy that can can eat up blocks, plug up the middle of that defensive line. Uh, he, he's a big-time impact player. And I think he's going to be a big boost for them. And you look at the defense again last year, it really struggled. I think he's a guy that can really shore up this defensive line. A defensive line that's going to be pretty deep this year as well. Uh, when we talk about Newkirk, when we talk about Gervin Dexter, I talked about a second ago. Uh, Antonio Shelton, he didn't make this list, but he's a transfer from Penn State that also is going to make a, a big impact. And then uh, there's another player that we'll get to in just a few moments. But Newkirk here at number eight. Number seven is Emory Jones, the quarterback. Is he one of the top seven most talented players for Florida? You know, it's hard to say, but he's going to make an impact mostly just because he's the starting quarterback. Last year, 18 of 32, 221 yards passing, two touchdowns. One interception, we know. He didn't really throw the ball a whole lot. Uh, he had 217 yards rushing, 6.8 yards per carry. So he would come into the game. The defense would know, all right, it's Wildcat or whatever you want to call it. Uh, he's coming in here. He's coming to run the football. And he still averaged 6.8 yards per carry. That tells you what kind of a threat he is on the ground. And when you talk about the passing game and, and how maybe these numbers aren't that great, it's tough to just run in the game. For a couple plays here and there it's tough to, I mean, you can't get into any kind of a rhythm now that he is expected to be the starter i think you're going to see him uh perform pretty well in the passing game i don't expect him to be one of the top passers in the sec or anything like that but i think he'll be good enough when you add in his running ability i think he becomes a serious threat for this florida team and i think he could surprise some people this year so i think emory jones will be one of the top 10 players for Florida this season. Moving on to number six, we got Damian Pierce. Last season, 503 yards, 4.7 yards per carry. Also had 156 yards receiving, five total touchdowns. Uh, I don't know that he's going to be used in the, in the pass game as much this year just because of the change in this offense. But they're going to run football so much more this year. And when you've got Emory Jones back there at quarterback, that takes some of the pressure off of the running back just because the defense never knows who's going to be running it. Will it be Jones? Will it be the running back? Now, Pierce, I don't think he's the most talented running back on this team. I'd probably go with Demarcus Bowman, and I know he really impressed a lot of people in the spring. But 
I was I was back and forth on those two running backs. You know, who is who's going to be the biggest impact for Florida this year? Will it be Pierce? Will it be Bowman? And don't forget Malik Davis, very capable running back as well. Um, and at the end of the day, I just think Pierce, because he's a veteran, uh, because he's proven it here, I think he's going to get the most carries. I think he's going to be the starter for them throughout the season. Uh, while Bowman might be the the better, more talented player, um, there it's not just you know running the ball. It's catching the ball out of the backfield. It's, it's blocking all of those things. I think Pierce will see the most playing time. And I've been impressed with him. You know, I, I see 4.7 yards per carry here last year. Not great. But if you go back to his previous seasons, I mean, he was up there around six yards per carry. Uh, he's a guy that has been really good for Florida. They just didn't run the football well last year. Uh, I think that will change this year with an improved offensive line with a dual threat quarterback back there. Um, I'm expecting Pierce's yards per carry average to go back up over five at least this year. And I think he's going to be their biggest impact running back. Number five is Jacob Copeland. We talk about all the losses at wide receiver. Well, Copeland is back, and I think he's going to be their number one guy. He will be the go-to wide receiver for Emory Jones, uh, really the most experienced guy coming back. 23 catches last season, 435 yards, three touchdowns, and that was you know that was with him behind Kadarius Tony, Kyle Pitts, Traven Grimes, uh, you know all these guys in front of him. Another guy to keep an eye on is maybe Justin Shorter. He's a, a talented kid. Could he maybe emerge as their top weapon? Possibly. But I think it's going to be Copeland. I think Copeland will will have a big year this year, 1,000-plus yards receiving. Even though I don't expect him to throw the ball as much, I still think he's going to be uh, a, the number one guy for them. So watch out for Jacob Copeland at number five. Number six is Brenton Cox. Uh, this is a guy that I think is going to have a huge impact for Florida this season. Last year at 42 tackles, 10 Tackles for loss, three and a half sacks. Two, he broke up two passes as well. He's going to play that buck linebacker, defensive end, hybrid, hybrid position, whatever you want to call it. So he's a guy that is mostly going to be a pass rusher, but will also step out there and uh, you know defend the run a little bit. And he's just a guy. He's their best, probably their best, just pure pass rush. I, well, I don't know. That's that's hard to say because there's another guy we haven't got to yet. Uh, but he's he's a guy that can get after the quarterback and just is a great pass rusher. Now, having him out there at that buck position going to be really big for Florida, uh, and I think we already saw uh, signs of what he could do last season. Number three is Ventrell Miller at linebacker. Probably the leader of the defense overall. 86 tackles last season, 7.5 tackles for loss, three and a half sacks, three pass breakups, one fumble recovery as well. He led the team in tackles. Um, he's a veteran guy, a senior. Uh, just again, like I said, the leader of this defense right there in the middle at linebacker. And I expect him to lead the team in tackles once again in 2021. Number two uh, is Zachary Carter on the defensive line. I talked about Cox. Well, Zachary Carter can also get after the quarterback. And maybe he's the better pass rusher. Um, 35 tackles last season. Nine tackles for loss. Five sacks. Had a fumble recovery. And also, he broke up two passes from that defensive line spot. Uh, this is a guy that has a chance to be a first-round draft pick. I think the top two players on this list both have a chance to be a first-round draft pick. Uh, I think, you know, it's big for him, big for Florida, for him coming back this year um, as a senior. And I just expect him to do big, big things. He's a, probably going to be a first-team All-SEC player, maybe even an All-American. Uh, Zachary Carter at number two. But number one for me is Kyer Elam at cornerback. Last season, 39 tackles, two interceptions, 11 passes defended. Uh, this is still a young kid. If you think about it, he has not even been through a spring practice, or had not until this year because he was not an early enrollee as a freshman, and then they didn't have a spring last season. Uh, so he's still a young guy, if you think about it. And we've already seen you know, flashes of greatness from him. Uh, he's going to be a guy that the, the defense, that offenses are probably not really going to throw the football at a whole lot. Uh, so you may not see his stats look great, uh, but he is a but he's becoming a shutdown corner. I think he's one of the top five cornerbacks in all of college football, maybe even a top three. I mean, he's that good. I think he's the best player on this team. Another guy that could be, like I said, with Carter, a guy that could be a first round draft pick. There are a lot of good corners uh, in college football this year. You know, I got a couple of them over at LSU. Uh, but Elam, I think, is right there with him. I think he's going to have a big season and a guy that is really going to maybe shut down one side of the field for them. Um, I think he's their best player, and he will have the biggest impact for Florida in 2021. Do you guys agree with my list? Do you disagree? Who should have been on here? Who shouldn't have been on here that I put on here? How would you have changed it? 
uh, give me your list down in the comments below. Thank you for watching this video and stay tuned for more here on our SEC football channel.